Hi guys, part two series to um, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Erica Girardi and Tom Fiasco with the newest lawsuit that we're seeing coming in from Christina Fulton who happens to be an ex-girlfriend of Nicolas Cage. Guys, uh, we, went, we went in depth into pretty much um, a lot of the details on this case in my last video so if you didn't catch it you should definitely check it out because it's, it, it's worth it to get all of the details we're going to kind of pick up where we left off um and i think that we left off somewhere along the lines of a payment being made to christina fulton that was sent to the jordy and keist um firm of course in you know assumption that it would be um deposited into the trust account okay but it didn't make it to the trust account it made it to the Girardi keys business account um guys before i get too much into this though go ahead hit that like button subscribe to my channel turn those notifications on it's worth it um these housewives are crazy they are state to state coast to coast and other countries and you never know what might be uh going on so if you want to stay up to speed you got to turn your notifications on okay i'm trying to grow my channel i would appreciate your likes and I would definitely appreciate your subscriptions so go ahead subscribe I give you guys all the facts all the details at the beginning of the video I might throw my opinion in at the end or on my lives but for the most part you're gonna hear the gossip the tea without a ton of ads and a ton of opinion and a ton of commentary and panels beforehand okay anyways let's get started so 2016 she seeks out Girardi and Keese. Um, Tom is 83 years old at the time, making him currently 89 years old. Um, they sue. She's awarded almost a million dollars. Um, and she sees like $7,000 of it. That's it. That's all she saw. And allegedly, she, even to this day, until she discovers settlement funds that had been dissipated and that she was lied to, she didn't have a case with them, Right. So with all of these cases, you know, happening and transpiring, there's been a lot of documents and legal documents and financial documents that have since been released. Um, so that's how they caught the earrings. Um, and allegedly, this is how they probably caught this case. And with Ronald Richards probably being privy to information that you and I may not, or even just from his legal background of, um, you know, knowing what's what and where to look, he was probably able to come across this pretty easily. Doubt he sought her out publicly to let her know what he had found, but he probably did on the low, I'm sure. And, and now he's representing her. Now, how this will affect his Twitter feed and his Twitter handle, I'm not sure. Because now will this because become a conflict of interest since he is actually in a legal suit with her at this point. Once his client filed um, and once they appear in court then it may become official that it could be some sort of a conflict of interest for him to tweet about Erica or the Erica and Girardi trust account, keep, whatever the case may be. He might not be allowed to do it if he's going to represent her, right? Um, I'm wondering what documents she found because she is alleging that this check was sent to the Jordy Keys firm and they deposited it into their business account. That the, the check never even made it to the trust account. That they forged her name and um they and she didn't agree to deposit it. They didn't notify her. There's laws you have to notify clients when their payment has been received in full. Like those are very serious things that, that attorneys are expected to do in these types of cases. That's why these trust accounts aren't monitored by the state. They're not monitored by an outside, um, you know, resource because we're dealing with attorneys who are allegedly ethical and then on top of that they're supposed to carry specific insurance specific business insurance to be able to operate their um, attorney's firm and in 99.9% .9 of cases the business insurance would cover something like this they would cover these sorts of expenses if the client was ripping people off okay but tom wasn't paying for any sort of insurance so therefore there's no insurance for these claims to fall back on they have to fall back on the trust right and again who's monitoring that the business that's operating as an attorney firm who's probably got you know 
tons and tons and lists of all these credentials and people, you know, giving them five star ratings and the Better Business Bureau this, and they weren't even working with a minimal amount of legal insurance that a business of their caliber should and was required to have. And that's another reason these poor folks, these poor victims are getting screwed. Okay. First of all, they had to pay if they got a settlement, they had to pay probably, let's just generalize, 40% to, to Girardi and Keese for their work. Let's just say 40%. Let's say another 10% for expert witness miscellaneous, okay? So let's say their whole entire settlement, 50% off the top, went to attorneys and fees. So now the remaining 50% is theirs, right? Allegedly, that's what they're being owed. But now you have the trustees who are managing managing the trust account, finding um, you know, monies, find, you know, trying to sell the home, keeping everything up to date, up the upkeep, keeping everything running smoothly so that they can try to make as much money off the estate and the things in the estate as possible to try and refund these victims. But in some sense, who pays the trustees, right? They're they're just average attorneys that have law firms or offices or jobs or whatever the case may be. So who pays for them? Oh, the trust pays for them. Yes, yes, yes. See, anything that they acquire for the trust that they find offshore. Struggles today, guys. Offshore accounts earrings, jewelry, anything that they find that is of value, that brings value to the trust, they receive a hefty 40% of that. So that's their payment. So now it's just a messed up web if you think about it, because now the victims have paid 50% of their settlement to Tom and or for, to Tom and Tom's firm for their services. And now, because Tom didn't pay them their money, now they also have to pay another percentage, okay, a 40% of the 50% to the trustees for finding the money, for working the trust, for distributing the money, for being ethical and making sure the people are, are getting what they're supposed to be getting. So... It's just very tangled web, um, and that's why, again, I've told you guys it's important that we had Ronald Richards here to break a lot of this down to us, especially at the beginning um, when it comes to legal issues and lawsuits and so much more different than criminal um, court, so much different, so much different, and I'm going to do a whole video on the difference between Erica and Jun Shaw and why we're seeing Jun Shaw go to prison for up to 30 years and while we're seeing Erica drink champagne on the show um, and where the difference is, okay? Um, another thing I wanted to bring up in this video really quickly, guys, have you seen the clips going around of um, Mauricio and Kyle? Like, there's been like three I've seen. And it's like always like a really short clip. And it's Mauricio like standing with Kyle somewhere and he's checking someone out. The first one is of, um, it's back when Kyle and Mauricio lived in Beverly Hills in that house and they started throwing their white party. And they're getting ready, and, and Kyle was sitting at her vanity. Mauricio is behind her, and the stylist is, like, right here. And Mauricio checks her out, up and down. He checks her out. And they caught it on camera, and it was put into the episode. Of course, nobody recognized it um, at the time. And if they did, the Internet was barely just, you know, getting off its feet, so nobody would have posted it. We didn't even have it, Twitter and Instagram then. But somebody remembered. This is, again, why I always tell you guys to go back and watch from the beginning. You never know what you're going to find. Somebody remembered. Somebody went back, found the clip, and posted it. Now, this second clip, I don't like to speak too much on this because it's so, you know, it's just it could be true. It could not be true either way. Ugh. Um, but it is a clip from Farah, Kyle's oldest daughter, Mauricio's stepdaughter, from her 30th birthday when they had that huge party at their house, the Halloween party, and they had a Ferris wheel. And it's like 
Farah, I think, is getting there. She's hugging Kyle and telling her thank you. And Kyle, of course, is dressed as a, you know, the Playboy bunny. And Mauricio is behind her, dressed as Hugh Hefner in, like, the red robe. And he, it looks like he is checking Farah out, um, out her behind, like, that's what it looks like. And there's been lots of rumors, lots of speculations for years and years and years regarding Farah and Mauricio. So I just wondered if you guys had seen those going around, if you had, what you thought of them. And then um, we also got to talk about Tamara and Jill and Vicky and the OC and the producer um, that's leaving. So before we get started, before though, guys, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, turn those notifications on so that you don't miss anything we have coming. Thank you.